Um, there is a wow, it really is a bit like there's a warning to the story. It involves some very irresponsible behavior. <laughs> so it is um, sometime in January, uh, probably around 11 p.m., maybe midnight, and I'm leaving my house and living in Vermont <clears throat> and getting in a car to go on this trip with two friends, and <clears throat> one of my friends and turns around and says, do you think this is a good idea? <laughs> and I say, yeah, it's only a three hour car ride, we'll be fine. Um, so the reason that we were going in the car for that trip was because um, we actually had just gotten back two hours before that from <clears throat> a weekend of partying in Montreal um, and had driven back to Vermont to where we lived. Um, and then the next morning we were planning on going um, to Maine to see some friends. And um, so we get back to Vermont and we get a case of beer and we are planning to drink until we pass out and then wake up in the morning and go to Maine. <laughs> and we decide, wait a minute, what if we just go to Maine right now? <laughs> like, just like, forget about sleeping and then we'll have more time in Maine. And we're all like, that's great, that's a great idea, let's go, let's pack up, you know, like, let's get going. And, um, so like I said, this is January. It's Vermont. I think it was something somewhere around zero, maybe negative five or something like that. Um, I'm 22 at the time. Um, we're young, like we think we have like the world is ours, and like all there is to do is like work hard and party hard, and you know we're just pretty much awesome, and we can do anything, and we're invincible. <laughs> and let's go. So we get in the car with like a sleeping bag and some food, maybe a couple snacks, and and drive through rural New England. Now in <clears throat> New England, like there's pretty much no, well northern New England, there's no um, east-west highways. There's only north-south. So to go, uh, even though we weren't going very far, to, to cross like two states in New England, two little tiny states, uh, <laughs> takes forever. And it's very rural and very isolated. Um, and also, we had been doing quite a bit of drinking for a very long, extended period of time. And, um, and I, you know, I wasn't drinking anymore, but, um, you know, there comes a point in, like, your drinking adventure where you either, like, stop and endure the hangover or, like, or just keep drinking. And that's usually the better idea, like, if you're going to be in an uncomfortable situation where you can't really, like, endure that hangover. Um, but I couldn't. I didn't. I wasn't going to drink and drive because I'm so noble. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just, I'll drive, and you guys just pass down the back, and we're awesome, woo, let's go. And then, like, an hour and a half into the trip, like, I am just sick. Like, just, it feels horrible. I mean, there's nothing fun and exciting. I don't feel like I have the world at my fingertips anymore. I feel like I want to die. I want my mom. I just, like, I want to go to sleep. Um, but, and my friends are just sleeping in the backseat. So we need gas, and I pull into this gas station, and um, I go straight to the bathroom, where I fall asleep. <laughs> and after I wake up, and Nate's, come on, let's go, we gotta go. So I get up and I go, and we, got, we leave, and uh, drive some more. And maybe like another hour, hour and a half passes. Maybe this was more like a three and a half hour drive. I don't know, some more time passes, and um, we're driving along, and all of a sudden like the car starts like jolting, you know, like it goes and then it kind of stops going, and then it goes and then it stops going. I'm like, oh no, hey guys, wake up, wake up. And uh, and then it just stops. I'm gonna pull over to the side of the road. So I already told you, it's like zero degrees outside. We're in rural New Hampshire, which at this point means like the last house was five miles back and we haven't seen a car in an hour. So what are we gonna do? I don't know. Um, we didn't have cell phones. Um, we decided the best thing that I could possibly do is to stand out in the middle of the road and flag down the next person that drives by, uh, which I do, and somehow convinced to take me to her house to have me call um, my mother to give me her AAA card, which happens, and in the meantime, I got I lost the privilege of that car as well. <laughs> um, so we, we call AAA, and they say, okay, well, someone will be there in 20 minutes, and like an hour later, I mean, we're like, we're like in the back seat huddled, kind of trying to stay alive. We're worried about, you know, the safety of our lives. And here comes the AAA guy, and he comes with his tow truck and, um, and, and sees us and, like, takes an immediate dislike to us. Um, and says, there's three of you, huh? And we're like, yeah, well, I can only fit two in my cab. We're like, are you serious? Like, you're just going to leave one of us here to die? <laughs> 
pretty much. <laughs> we convinced him, you know, eventually, like, please, please, we're like crying, like, let us in your cab, take us somewhere. So we get in, and he's like, well, where do you want to go? And I say, well, I was kind of hoping that you would be able to answer that question since we don't know where we are, nor do we know, like, the nearest service station or perhaps motel. And he goes, well, mine's too far away. You only get five miles, so I guess we'll just start driving. I'm like, oh, my God. This guy's great. Why doesn't he just murder us? Like, why is he putting us through this adventure? Uh, so he, um, he takes it. He starts driving, and we're like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then we see this, um, we see this like closed store and a, and a payphone. We're like, stop. We call AAA and we tell them like, there's this man who wants us dead. It's five degrees, we're gonna die. Like, please help us send someone else. And the guy's like, I'm sorry, I'd really like to help you, but the nearest next one away, the AAA person is 150 miles. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> So at this point, I'm like trying to get this evil man to drive us like to, he has to know where something is, like he lives here. This is his whole life. He probably like, grew up here. You know, this is it. And he just won't, won't help. So I'm like, please, he's like, well, we need money to go past five miles. And I was like, I have this credit card. He's like, well, I won't take credit cards. <laughs> so basically, we ended up calling my friend Nate's father, who lived two hours away. I call him in the middle of the night and tell him what's going on, and he heads out to come get us. And the tow truck driver leaves mm -hmm. us there to die, basically, um, on the side of the road, just there. And I mean, we were like, we we're in the back seat, like, in, with a one sleeping bag, shivering and like trying to stay awake, hitting each other, just like doing whatever we could to like stay awake, like stay alive. But finally. <laughs> We make it, and his father picks us up and puts us in his like nice warm truck, and he takes us to get um, hot chocolate and drives us <laughs> to his house, and we get there, and we're just like, oh my god, <laughs> wow, what an adventure! And we like just kind of pass out on the living room floor, and then we wake up in the morning, and AAA calls, and they say, you're not gonna believe this, but that tow truck driver had gone one more mile. There was a service station, garage, and a motel across the street. This guy was evil. <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> um, but anyway, they said, well, somebody else, or that, that station, you know, towed it to their place, and they're going to look at it, and they'll help you. I said, okay. So a little while later, I get a phone call from the mechanic, and he's, he says, well, we got your car. We got it all fixed up. You can come pick it up. And I was like, well, thank you so much. You know, what do I owe you? What was wrong? And he said, well, it shouldn't cost you too much because we only had to put in a little bit of gas. <laughs> so flashback <laughs> to the stop at the gas station to get gas. <laughs> and I was so sick because I'm such a crazy youth, like just the world at my fingertips. And I can do anything and I'm invincible, but unless... I get really sick at the gas station and fall asleep on the toilet and then forget to put gas in the car. <laughs> so, when I think back to those like little words that I said, like, don't worry about it, it's only a three hour car drive and we'll be fine. Whenever I hear myself saying something like that now, I really, really, really stop to take a, a, a longer look <laughs> at what I'm about to face. And really, is it such a good idea? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.